He's right there. That's no satellite. Each cow we put on the place becomes a biosensor. Animals seem to have that sixth sense. I presume Otto is the space. Hey, 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 right here. Thomas has spotted a light. Season five of Skinwalker Ranch leaked startling new discoveries that could change everything. The team is gearing up to flood the ranch with advanced instruments, including a 1.6 gigahertz signal, something never tried before. There's a sense of urgency as they prepare to deploy this high-tech equipment to uncover the strange happenings on their land. And the big question that is on everyone's mind is, could an unseen force be behind these strange events? Join us as the Skinwalker Ranch crew searches for answers that could rewrite what we know about reality. Digging for answers in the Mesa. The history of Skinwalker Ranch is marked by numerous significant experiments and key events that have drawn widespread interest. Reflecting on these impactful events is crucial as they have shaped the series. The team at the ranch has faced many intense and unsettling incidents. However, their recorded evidence and logical justifications have kept others from dismissing their claims as mere fabrications. In particular, season four has drawn significant attention from both devoted fans and important government officials. With the new episodes currently airing, Theories and speculations abound, urging viewers to keep up with the latest blend of supernatural phenomena and advancements in science and technology. During season four, the team took measurements of various unusual occurrences, such as gamma rays and disturbances in the RF and microwave spectrums, along with some strange behavior among the cattle. It is important to note for viewers that this season includes some of the most thrilling and extraordinary scenes ever broadcast, and it is not suitable for those who scare easily. The research team gathers in the command center at Skinwalker Ranch for a vital meeting with Pete Kelsey to go over recent scan data collected between the Mesa drill site and Homestead 2. Travis Taylor, a prominent member of the team, confirms that all data has been processed and is ready for examination. Eric Bard, the lead investigator, takes the helm of the meeting. Following some brief initial discussions, they focus on the data from the multispectral analysis at Homestead 2 which shows a horizontal anomaly that does not align with natural geological formations. Travis suggests exploring further by excavating in different directions to better understand this anomaly, proposing they start by digging north and south. He asks for a grayscale view of the data, which reveals multiple lines in the images. Travis conducts a detailed examination of each line and ultimately identifies a total of five lines. The conversation then shifts to Pete's interpretation of these lines, who suggests they might be depressions that collect water, causing vegetation to grow differently in those areas. Travis discusses the orientation of the detected lines near some unusual circles west and south of their drilling site on the Mesa. These lines do not seem to have formed naturally, raising questions about their origin, how deep they are below the surface, and what might have created them. The team speculates whether these lines could be connected to the unusual GPS data they encountered during their tour with Jay Stratton. Eric questions Thomas Winterton, the ranch superintendent, about any unusual features he observed near where the strange horizontal lines were detected. Thomas reports seeing nothing out of the ordinary in that area. Dr. Taylor, another expert on the team, suggests that the area appears to be a man-made channel. Pete adds his perspective indicating that the markings might suggest that a trench had been dug there previously. This ongoing investigation at Skinwalker Ranch continues to uncover unexpected findings and challenges our current understanding of the area, making each episode a discovery of new possibilities and a deeper comprehension of the unexplained phenomena occurring there. The commitment of the team to uncover the truth behind these anomalies ensures that the series remains a captivating and enlightening exploration into the unknown. Several years ago, Dr. Taylor came across information about a specific site on Skinwalker Ranch, where previous caretakers, known as the Shermans, advised against any digging. The present owner, Brandon Fugel, had received similar warnings that disturbing the soil near Homestead II could lead to unpredictable and potentially harmful events. During the late 1990s to early 2000s, when the ranch was under the study of Robert Bigelow, many details of the investigations were kept from the public. Dr. Taylor, intrigued by unusual findings in a field near Homestead II, 
suspected that these could be connected to previous excavation activities by the earlier team. He was convinced that further exploration was necessary to understand the true nature of these findings fully. Thomas, another team member, shared his thoughts with the group, suggesting that Bigelow might have been looking for something beneath the surface in the area marked by horizontal lines. Dr. Taylor recommended initiating digs from both the north and south ends of these lines, hoping to uncover whatever might be hidden beneath. The team agreed, believing that this approach could lead to significant discoveries. Plans were made to bring an excavator to the site the next day to start this exploration. By the following day, an excavator was already at work in the area. Caleb and Thomas led the excavation efforts. During their digging, they encountered a layer of soil that showed an unusual pattern of discoloration. They immediately examined this layer closely. Dr. Travis Taylor was called over to analyze the strange markings in the soil. The team discovered that the discoloration matched the width of a bulldozer blade, suggesting it was not naturally formed. This layer, different from the surrounding soil, contained fine crystals, prompting a deeper investigation into its composition and origins. The team, utilizing the data from multispectral imaging, decided to extend their digging to another section of the site to see if similar materials could be found. When they dug across the first line, they found a significant amount of the same crystalline material. Dr. Taylor was puzzled about the reasons behind burying such material in straight, precise lines across a field. The discovery, visible only through specialized imaging techniques, led to more questions than answers. As the search gets deeper, Travis and the team find hidden things underground, showing strange patterns that are hard to explain. Exploring hidden lines in the soil, Dr. Taylor hypothesized that if there were ever an advanced civilization trying to mark a territory covertly, they might do so in a manner that wouldn't be obvious to local inhabitants. However, such efforts to remain hidden were potentially compromised by the advanced technologies now used by the research team. The meticulous placement of these materials in designated lines convinced the team that this was not a natural occurrence. If it had been a natural formation, similar materials would likely be found more widely across the ranch. Eric, another key team member, suggested that the next step should be to collect samples of the unearthed material and send them to a university for detailed analysis. They hoped that experts could shed light on the composition and possible origin of the materials. This analysis might provide crucial insights into whether these findings were part of a larger unseen pattern or phenomenon at the ranch. This ongoing investigation continues to push the boundaries of current understanding with each new finding prompting further exploration and study. The team carefully packed their tools and equipment, and after three days, they gathered again to examine the samples they had collected from their recent excavation near the second homestead on their property. The geophysics department at the University of Utah analyzed these samples. The findings indicated that the crystal-like substances uncovered to the east of Homestead, too, were composed of the same materials found earlier at the Mesa site. There, their drilling efforts had been stopped by an unyielding barrier deep beneath the surface. Dr. Taylor, viewing these results as significant, concluded that the two sites might be connected due to the similarity in materials. He noted that the substances were made up of conductive materials such as sodium, magnesium, aluminum, potassium, and iron, which are known for their ability to conduct electricity yet it remained unclear what these conductive lines were intended for. Dr. Taylor developed a theory based on the layout of these materials. He suggested that if one were to look down from above, the arrangement of these substances across the ranch's surface resembled an electrical circuit board. He hypothesized that these could be lines of an electrical field, perhaps measurable with advanced equipment. This setup might be affecting the vegetation, visible from the changes in the plant life which he thought might be a secondary effect of the underlying structures. The team speculated on whether this setup was intentionally created for discovery. In preparation for further investigation, they assembled their equipment at a site they referred to as the Triangle at 6 p.m. The experiment planned for that evening was critical and the team was ready. Beret Anderson prepared his high-speed cameras, which could capture up to 5,000 images per second to ensure no detail was missed during the test. Alongside him, 
David Mason set up his high-resolution thermal cameras, equipped with FLIR technology, capable of detecting unusual heat patterns that are invisible to the human eye. An hour later, the entire setup was complete and the team was ready to begin their experiment. The spotlight was positioned to shine in a direction away from the campsite where they had pitched tents and arranged their technical equipment. Tom Winterton, the superintendent of Skinwalker Ranch, was present to oversee the operation. Travis Taylor, leading the team, shared their strategy for the night. In previous experiments at the Triangle, they had used a flamethrower to provoke unusual phenomena successfully. However, for this experiment, they decided to use a rocket for consistency with their previous successful attempts. Travis counted down, and at his signal, the rocket was launched into the sky. The entire sequence was meticulously recorded by Beret Anderson. Upon reviewing the footage, the team observed a perplexing event. As the rocket ascended, it unexpectedly changed its path at a specific height, a peculiar behavior that mirrored anomalies observed in previous tests. Between 75 to 80 feet in the air, the rocket suddenly shifted direction before resuming its intended flight path. This deviation was puzzling to the team as it did not align with the expected behavior of a rocket, and they struggled to find an explanation. Travis considered this an extraordinary finding, suggesting that what they had observed might challenge the foundational principles of rocket science. The research team at Skinwalker Ranch prepared to conduct the flamethrower part of their experiment. They set everything up outside and made sure the flamethrower was ready to be used. With all their equipment checked and settings configured, they signaled to Brian, who was positioned 31 feet away, the designated distance for this test. Upon activation, the flamethrower unleashed a large burst of fire that illuminated the night sky, casting a bright light over the area. The team members, standing at a higher vantage point, could feel the warmth radiating from the intense blaze. They watched in fascination as the fire danced in the darkness, and simultaneously they monitored the data appearing on their screens. Some of the data seemed unusual, prompting them to gather more closely to analyze what was being recorded. The team noticed something unexpected in the high-speed camera footage, which Beret had slowed down for better examination. There were noticeable gaps in the flame where it should have been continuous and unbroken. This observation was unusual, and Nathan Whitehead, the expert in handling the flamethrower, confirmed that such gaps in the flame pattern were not normal based on his extensive experience with such devices. He had observed many instances of flamethrower use and never had he seen the flame split in such a manner. Don Mitchell, responsible for managing fire safety, was puzzled by the shape the flames were taking, describing it as a horseshoe pattern. He speculated that perhaps the flame was encountering an unseen obstacle, like a different airflow or some sort of barrier, which was causing the flame to distort and change shape. He pointed out that on two occasions, they observed strange whirls or vortices in the flames, indicating that the fire seemed to swirl around or break apart at specific points. With new strange forces affecting their tests, the team digs deeper, trying to understand these strange happenings. High-speed camera revelations. The clarity provided by the high-speed camera was invaluable. Although no visible obstruction was noted during the live experiment, playback of the footage clearly showed that something at the 31-foot mark was affecting the flame emitted from Nathan's flamethrower causing it to split into two distinct streams. This piece of evidence was crucial as it suggested that an unseen force or object was altering the path of physical items in that specific spot in the sky. Reflecting on the data gathered, Travis, the team leader, realized a pattern was emerging from the experiments conducted at this specific location. Rockets launched from here consistently exhibited strange behavior upon reaching the 31-foot mark deviating from their expected paths. This recurring phenomenon had become a significant point of interest and concern for the team. Additionally, the unexpected behaviors observed during the flamethrower test added another layer of complexity to their findings. Travis noted the unusual vortices that seemed to form in midair, suggesting that invisible spaces or voids in that area might be causing the flames to diverge or separate. Determining the cause of these phenomena was challenging, as the disturbances appeared to be caused by factors not directly observable. After a long night of testing and observation, 
the team decided to end their activities. They packed up their extensive array of equipment and cleared the area, planning to reconvene the next morning to further discuss and analyze their findings. The following morning, the team met at the command center on the ranch to go over the high-speed camera footage captured the night before. They replayed and scrutinized the moment the rocket was launched, focusing particularly on its unexpected directional change. They carefully observed how the rocket ascended smoothly from the center of the triangle formation and then, without any apparent reason, abruptly altered its course. The team engaged in a detailed discussion about what could be influencing the rocket to change its direction in midair, considering various possibilities that might explain the strange aerial behavior they were documenting. The team at Skinwalker Ranch closely examines the footage from their recent flamethrower experiment. They notice how the intense flames trace the path of the fuel sprayed from the flamethrower. Travis, who is overseeing the analysis, points out that there is a curious division in the flames that appears to arc over something invisible. But no clear reason for this behavior is evident. This peculiar observation prompts the team to delve deeper into the data to try and understand the forces at play. Seeking further insights, they decide to review additional footage that was captured using near-infrared technology, hoping it might shed light on the unusual occurrences. As they go through this new footage, Travis scrutinizes the screen, searching for any minor discrepancies that might appear. He identifies a small, swiftly moving object that seems to float through the air, visible just outside the main blaze of the flame. He estimates that this object travels from a height of 50 to 60 feet and then disappears near the 30-foot mark. Based on its rapid movement, Travis concludes that it moves 30 feet in less than a second. This rapid movement is similar to phenomena they observed in previous experiments involving a rocket, where a similar unidentified aerial phenomenon, UAP, was detected interacting with their equipment. Travis draws a parallel between this recent sighting and past incidents where an unexplained force appeared to interact with their rockets, sometimes causing them to explode unexpectedly. These recurring events, particularly around the 30 to 35 foot level, lead the team to believe that there might be a physical entity or force influencing their experiments at specific heights. Attention then shifts to a large-scale experiment planned at the Triangle area of Skinwalker Ranch, a location central to many of the team's activities and noted for its unexplained occurrences. Under the darkness of night, they prepare for a significant test that involves launching six rockets simultaneously, conducted by Lock Precision, in deploying a formation of 250 drones by Sky Elements. Considering previous experiments where even a single rocket triggered unusual events, the team is keen to observe the effects of a more extensive launch. As the experiment commences, Travis ensures everyone's safety by confirming that all personnel are clear of the launch area. The drones are set and ready. When the rockets are launched, Travis notes that only three of the planned six rockets fire correctly while two remain on the pad initially. After a short delay, these remaining rockets are launched. During their ascent, one rocket notably deviates from its planned path, drawing the team's focus. Simultaneously, the drone swarm, designed to explore up to 300 feet, ascends in two clusters. While the majority of the drones follow their intended paths, one drone behaves erratically, suggesting it might have encountered an anomaly at about the 300-foot level. Following this, the drones attempt to reorganize into a structured formation resembling a large cube to comprehensively cover the area of interest. However, several drones struggle to maintain their assigned positions, and some begin to emit a blue light, indicating they have entered fail-safe mode due to critically low battery levels. Amidst this organized chaos, two drones collide. The aerial display lasts for five and a half minutes before all drones are recalled for assessment. After evaluating the condition of the equipment and the data collected, Travis decides that more testing is necessary. Preparations for another set of launches begin. The drones are readied for another ascent, and the rockets are set for another launch attempt. This persistent effort to uncover the nature of the anomalies at Skinwalker Ranch continues as each test provides new pieces of the puzzle, bringing the team closer to understanding the strange phenomena that occur at this strange location. At night, their tests show weird things in the sky, revealing more clues and hinting at a bigger puzzle. The case of the missing rocket. 
Travis positions himself on his back for an optimal view of the rocket's launch. Just before they proceed to the next part of their experiment, Eric announces a significant observation captured on the forward-looking infrared camera. He explains that an anomaly, resembling a slender streak, has been detected moving across the sky, perfectly aligning with the left-hand corner of their screen. The team decides to mark this observation with a timestamp and continue with their planned activities. Travis is then invited to analyze this finding. It is detailed to him how the streak, initially a single line, split into three or four separate lights following the rocket's ignition. Eric suggests that they might be witnessing an unidentified flying object maintaining a formation. This sight of the unidentified flying object dividing and realigning itself into an orderly pattern is particularly striking, possibly marking one of the most significant observations documented at Skinwalker Ranch. Driven by this compelling observation, the team is motivated to deepen their investigations, eager to uncover what other phenomena might manifest. As they continue to observe the sky, they suddenly lose sight of the rocket. Travis calls for the night vision equipment to be deployed. Thomas retrieves the night vision goggles and attempts to locate the rocket but it remains undetectable. Eric, monitoring the infrared displays, is also unable to find any trace of it. The team reluctantly concludes that the rocket has completely disappeared, leaving no evidence of its whereabouts. As the clock approaches 2 a.m. at the location known as the Triangle, Travis inquires with the crew whether the rocket can be seen in the sky. They exchange questions about whether anyone noticed the deployment of the parachute but no one confirms seeing or hearing anything that would indicate the rocket's descent. A team member states that the rocket must be long gone, reasoning that they would have heard a loud noise if it had crashed. They turn their focus back to the FLIR monitor, which records everything using infrared technology. Travis contemplates the series of events, recognizing this as their boldest and most unusual experiment of the year, and certainly one of the strangest occurrences ever at the ranch. In their extensive efforts to explore the strange zone above the triangle, the team has used advanced technologies including powerful lasers, rockets equipped with LIDAR and GPS, and other sophisticated tools to investigate the area. Despite their extensive preparations, their most powerful rocket, designed to travel at speeds of up to 800 miles per hour and reach altitudes of 10,000 feet, inexplicably vanishes after its launch. The disappearance occurs in the very zone where an earlier radar balloon scan had detected a minor yet unexplained shift in time, a quarter of a second. Bryant, also known as Dragon, who oversees security at Skinwalker Ranch, listens attentively as Travis explains how the rocket, large enough to be clearly visible upon re-entry, simply vanished without any trace. This baffling event highlights the unusual and compelling nature of their ongoing research at the ranch marking this area as a focal point for unexplained phenomena. In a reflective moment, the team revisits the event where they released a balloon into the sky and later discovered that they had encountered a small but significant time discrepancy, specifically a loss of a quarter of a second. This finding was unexpected and provided them with valuable data, supporting a theory long discussed by esteemed scientists, including the famed Albert Einstein. This theory suggests that such discrepancies in time could indicate the presence of a traversable wormhole nearby, a concept that has fascinated scholars for decades. Travis, keen on understanding the broader implications, looks forward to diving deep into the massive data sets they've accumulated, hoping to analyze each detail meticulously. On the other hand, Eric is more concerned with the immediate tasks, focusing on securing the trackers from their drones to ensure all data and equipment are accounted for before they begin their thorough analysis of the findings. After ensuring all equipment is properly collected and secured, the team decides to conclude their field activities for the evening. Several days later, they reconvene in Salt Lake City, Utah. Eric has dedicated a substantial amount of time to examining the large volumes of data they collected from their recent field experiments. The team gathers in the office of Brandon Fugel, the proprietor of Skinwalker Ranch, for an extensive briefing session. This session is set to be a significant event attended by several distinguished individuals. Among them is Gary Herbert, the governor of Utah, who shows a keen interest in the findings and their implications for the state. 
Jim Royston, the CEO of Omnitech and a former executive director of the International Space Station Laboratory, brings a scientific perspective to the discussions. Also present is Jay Stratton, a former director of the UAP Task Force with extensive experience in defense and intelligence. Stratton, who had previously supervised investigations at the ranch alongside Robert Bigelow in the early 2000s, offers a deep understanding of the ranch's history and its unique phenomena. Jim Morris, the manager of Skinwalker Ranch, is also in attendance, ready to contribute to the discussions and learn from the collected data. This gathering of experts and leaders is poised to delve into the intricacies of the data and discuss the potential implications of their findings. Brandon Fugel begins the meeting by emphasizing the significance of the recent months of investigation and research, which have led to some of the most groundbreaking and historically significant findings yet. Eric takes the lead in discussing the drone experiment, which was carefully recorded using advanced thermal imaging technology. He explains that the experiment was meticulously planned and executed, with the FLIR camera strategically positioned to cover a specific area of the mesa and a section of the sky. Looking for answers, they use new tools and expert help to find patterns that don't make sense in normal ways. Analyzing Lethal Thermal Footage During his review, Eric highlights various phenomena captured in the thermal footage that have sparked significant interest. These observations, captured on camera, suggest unusual activities and patterns that could be crucial in understanding the perplexing events frequently reported at Skinwalker Ranch. The data presented promises to open up new avenues for research and possibly provide explanations for the unusual occurrences that have long been associated with the ranch. The meeting continues with detailed presentations and discussions, each contributing to a deeper understanding of the complex phenomena observed at this unique location. The team initially focuses on footage of rockets being launched, captured clearly on their equipment. Alongside these launches, thermal imaging uncovers additional phenomena that are not visible without technological aid. Eric, intent on providing a deeper understanding, displays this footage in a format that adds a three-dimensional quality, making it easier to notice even the smallest of details. This enhanced view reveals a moving spot on the screen. When the footage is played back, it becomes evident that this object didn't travel into the frame from any visible direction, but seemed to simply appear spontaneously. Travis stimulates thinking among the group with a thoughtful question about the origin of this object, while Brandon Fugel expresses curiosity regarding how such an object could materialize so suddenly. Travis shares an observation with the group that numerous unexplained aerial phenomena have been recorded above Skinwalker Ranch. The fact that this sighting coincided with a rocket vanishing at roughly 10,000 feet above the terrain prompts him to consider a possible connection between these events. Eric teases further intriguing observations to come and introduces footage showing objects moving in a synchronized manner, resembling a tactical formation. The group's attention is captivated as a small object swiftly traverses the screen, then slows and divides into multiple smaller entities, mimicking the process of cell division. This visual phenomenon leaves the observers spellbound. Reflecting on the group's initial confusion at seeing the unexplained aerial phenomenon divide into smaller units, Eric refines the video for better clarity. He zooms in to reveal more striking details. When he removes the filter, the footage, now shown in thermal vision, displays the objects coordinating as if part of a fleet. Eric adds a new observation, noting that the objects exhibit a higher temperature than their surroundings, suggesting they are emitting heat. Despite the nighttime setting, Eric rules out the possibility of these being birds, given their highly unusual coordinated movements. Cameron Fugel critiques the bird hypothesis, pointing out that the behavior displayed does not align with known bird behaviors, especially not the tightly packed formation followed by a dispersal. Travis expands on this thought, hypothesizing that if these were indeed birds, their movement would require instantaneous communication or individual rapid assessments to prevent collisions due to their proximity. He further speculates that if there is a controlling signal directing their movement, it might indicate that these entities are being manipulated through remote control or some form of direct communication. In the additional video material that Eric presents, there are more objects that suddenly become visible and start to increase in number. 
These objects move in a way that seems too orderly, indicating that their behavior is not typical of any natural creatures. This lack of natural movements like wing flapping or other recognizable animal behaviors strengthens the team's doubts about these objects being any known type of wildlife. Travis and the entire team consider several theories about the strange happenings at Skinwalker Ranch. Some suggest that the ranch might be influenced by some form of intelligent force, contain a concealed underground facility, or even serve as a portal to different realms. The documentation of such incidents at the ranch offers some support for these very theories, yet clear explanations are still not found. Is the team at Skinwalker Ranch really uncovering groundbreaking truths? Or are they stirring up phenomena best left untouched? Could these discoveries be too much for the world to handle? Tell us what you think and don't forget to like and subscribe for more.